Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics and we are now on section 12.4, the hyperbola. If you haven't noticed, we're just breezing through analytic geometry because we're not uh, sitting down and calculating points. We're just finding some common patterns and rules that uh, helps us to draw the graph exactly once and then never have to draw it again except located at a different point or scaled or stretched. Okay, so the hyperbola comes from equations that look like this. Okay. And so if you were to draw a table of which values satisfy this equation, you would have x and y and 1 would solve it, 2 and 1 half, 3 and 1 third, 4 and 1 quarter, and so on and so forth. But you also have 1 half and 2, 1 third and 3, and 1 quarter and 4. Note that x and y cannot be 0. Because if either of those were zero, then the entire thing must be zero. So what does a parabola look like? Um, I hope that you will actually do this more carefully on a piece of paper. But the solutions, 1 comma 1 is a solution. Oh, I forgot to mention that if we take minus of this, then it's going to be minus of the other as well. So minus 1 would be minus 1 as well. So there's a mirror on the other side there. So 1, 1. So when x is 2, we go up to 1 half. When x is 3, we go to 1 third. When x is 4, we go to 1 fourth. And when x is 1 half, we go to 2. x is 1 quarter, we go to 4, and so on and so like that. So it's going to basically never touch the 0, and it's going to move kind of like tangent does, actually, where it's never actually touching. So let's go 2 would be there, and would be down there. This one over here would be 1 half, and then 1 quarter. This one would come over, and then it's arc down like that. So that is basically what a parabola looks like never intersects the coordinate axes. It just kind of gets closer and closer to it over, over the distances. Okay, let's do an example. So we're going to solve the equation y minus 2 is equal to 1 over x plus 3. Multiply both sides by x plus 3. So we go my, y minus 2 times x plus 3 equals 1. And indeed, you might have guessed that we're going to say here that y prime is equal to y minus 2, and x prime is equal to x plus 3. And so the center for this new graph is going to be 2 on the y-axis and minus 3. So it's going to be centered over here. And so we can draw kind of the new coordinate system, and then we can draw our parabola moved over there. Okay, That's all there is to that. Um, this parabola appears in slightly more complicated formulas. So if we get xy minus 2x plus 3y plus 4 is equal to 5. How do we solve that? Well, we say, well, there's an x and there's a 3. So we have x plus 3. And then we have a y over here. And I'm sorry, x, yeah, the 3 is going to multiply by the y. So the y minus 2, because the 2 has to multiply by the x. So that's that term there. And then we have this leftover term 4. Just like with completing the squares, if we put this down, then that means we had to take from somewhere a minus 6. So there's a minus 6 in here, so we have to add a 6 to keep everything balanced. Okay, So then we're going to get x plus 3, y minus 2, so equals minus 5. Okay. Now, we have a couple differences here. Now we have a minus 5. We have the centered... minus 3 and 2. So it's centered at minus 3 comma 2. Okay, and then we need to figure out what that 5 is going to do. Okay, in this case, uh, we would draw a little table to kind of understand that. So if x is 1, then y has to be minus 5. If x is 2, then y has to be minus 5 over 2. If x is, let's just do 4, that's minus 5 over 4. And if x is 1 half, then y has to be minus 10, and if x is 1 quarter, then y has to be minus 20, okay? And if x is negative, then y has to be positive. So drawing that graph, okay, so that's the main coordinate axes. We're going to draw a new coordinate axis that is offset, uh, centered at minus 3 comma 2, so minus 3 comma 2, so we draw that there. That's our new coordinate axis that this thing is centered at, okay? And, I'm sorry, this should be x prime and y prime, right? And then we have when x prime is 1, y is minus 5, so it's going to be down here. Uh, x prime is 2, y is 5 halves, so it's half of that. And when x prime is 4, it's half of that again, okay? 
And then when x is 1 half, it's going to be 10. So it's like way down here and minus 20, which is like way down there. Okay, so you can kind of see that it, it does this weird thing here. And the same, it's going to be mirrored along this axis the same way. Okay, so that is kind of what it's going to look like. All right. Another way to think of this is that we have basically root of 5 and negative root of 5. Okay, so at that point, negative root of 5, root of 5, that's kind of the inflection point. That's the point where it gets closest to the the uh, origin, okay? So you take the square root of that, that'll tell you how close it's supposed to be, okay? Well, yeah. Root of five times negative root of five would give you negative root of five, okay? I was worried about taking the square root of a negative number. Um, he has an example from physics. I don't think it's that directly applicable to physics, and it, I kind of, I'm just gonna skip it. It really isn't that interesting. Um, I don't know if that's really a well-placed, because he's using a force that isn't um, inversely, it's not the inverse square force. We only encounter inverse constant, like inverse 1 over x forces. Um, it's pretty rare, actually. We don't encounter that too, too often. Normally, it's like an, it's proportional to the square. Uh, springs have that. Springs, yeah, springs have an inverse to the the displacement, not the displacement squared. Anyway, the homework, sketching the graphs, trying to find ways to do it. These all look fairly straightforward. Um, intersection, same thing. You just find the points where they match, um, and that's all. The next section, section 12.5, you can skip if you want. I think it's really interesting, and I'm going to cover it. Guys, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.